welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our dye Mermazing Mermaid, and we're also going to be introducing our Sunray background stencil. So let's go ahead and check them out. First, we're gonna take a look at this adorable mermaid, and she is a paper piecing style die, and we have lots of other dies in this style, like our Hey Lady dies or our Garden Gnome, and these are so much fun to do. So we're gonna start by putting together this adorable mermaid, and what we've done is die cut the mermaid in a bunch of different colors, and we just attached the pieces to a full stick post-it just so that you guys could see all of the different pieces really easily, but when I die cut these on my own, I just let all the pieces kind of float around on my desk. Now these paper piecing style dies have the base die and the outline dies, and we're gonna work with the base die first. And my favorite way to use these dies is to use double-sided adhesive sheets. So we're gonna peel off that liner paper and we're gonna stick it to some black cardstock. And then we're gonna die cut the black cardstock with the base die, which is the one that's just an open die in that mermaid shape. We've also die cut the base shape for the seashell and the crown as well. So now you can peel up the second layer of the double-sided adhesive and you've effectively created a really awesome sticker. So we're going to take the outline piece here and this is the one we've die cut out of black licorice cardstock and we're gonna lay this right on top. And this is gonna create almost like a little puzzle and we're gonna pop pieces into the puzzle. But because we added that double-sided adhesive sheet, it's really easy because the adhesive is right there and you don't need to worry about trying to put liquid glue on all the pieces. It makes it much faster to put together. So now we went and took some of the hair. We're doing red hair like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. We're going to add her bikini top and then her tail. And you can see that the pieces fit just right in. And oh my gosh, I love building these because there's something about dropping in those little pieces that I find very relaxing, kind of like a little puzzle. So now we're going to add in her face and arms and her midriff there. And then we're gonna work on her eyes. And usually when you die cut the black licorice cardstock, the eyes and the mouth stay in the die cut and that's great because you can just lay the die cut over top, use a pokey tool to poke through and that'll perfectly put the eyes and the mouth into the cute little mermaid. Now we're going to work on her crown. So once again, we have the base, we're peeling up the liner paper to expose the adhesive. We're gonna put the kind of frame outline piece and then we're gonna fill in each of those with some gold cardstock this time, which looks so cool because it looks like she has this really awesome golden crown. And so we're gonna drop in each of those little pieces just using a little quick stick tool to make it easier to pick up all of those tiny little pieces. I think this crown is just so pretty. Later on in the video, we're gonna use pearlescent vellum in the crown and that looks so gorgeous too. Now, of course you can add the crown or not to the mermaid, but we're gonna add the crown because it's super cute. And then next up, we're going to do the shell. And the shell is super easy because of the base, we have the frame, and then we're just going to drop in the little seashell piece. Now, in this case, we've used colored cardstocks to add awesome color to this beautiful mermaid. We're gonna use Copic markers in just a little bit, and that's a really fun way to add color to this adorable little girl, too. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the Sunray stencil, and this is one of my favorite new stencils. It's absolutely gorgeous, and there's a lot of cool and different ways to use it. So one of my favorite things is it looks really great coming up from the bottom or coming up from the top, depending on what design you're looking to do. It also looks great portrait and landscape. So we're gonna start off with a portrait design here and I'm gonna use some lemonade ink, which is a really fun bright yellow for this beautiful sun ray. Now this is awesome as a sun ray and we're gonna be using it like that in this video and we've used it in other videos as well, but it's really cool for adding other texture too. And we're gonna be showing you that with the mermaid in just a little bit. So now our inking is all done. We can peel up the stencil and how gorgeous is that? It's such a cool and bold design. Obviously it's great as sun rays, sunrise or sunset, but it's also really cool just as a fun like graphic element on the background of a card too, which I really love. Now we're gonna take a look at what it looks like on a landscape card. And it actually has a really different look because you can shift the stencil up and down and use the different thickness of the rays depending on the look you're going for in your card. Because that landscape gives you a little bit more space up and down, which I really love that that helps you kind of play around with the whole look of this stencil. So in this case, I'm kind of going back and forth. Uh, we'll see what looks nice. I really like that, it's kind of centered. And we're gonna go ahead and ink it up with that lemonade ink again, just going over all of the rays. I always like to start towards the bottom and then go lighter towards the top for kind of a sunrise, sunrise look or the other way around, right? For more of like the sun coming down at noon or something. So you can really play around with the different looks even with just one color of ink by adding a little bit more ink towards the bottom and a little less towards the top. 
And now here you can see how gorgeous that bowl design is and what a different look it has either right side up or upside down, but also because we were able to use kind of like the wider part of the rays. Now we're going to be taking that same exact ink and we're just going to ink over it. So on the other one, we left it nice and bold, bright yellow, bright white. In this case, I wanted it to be this really fun, just sunshiny sky. So I'm gonna fill in the rest of those white areas. As I do that, it actually darkens up the rays that we already inked and you get this really gorgeous contrast. I'm also adding extra ink towards the bottom to give the feeling of the sun being at the bottom of the card. And I think that's just such a pretty look. And here's a comparison between the inked over version and the just plain yellow and white version. Um, and I just think they look so cool and I love that there's so many different looks with these. Once again, landscape portrait, inking over it or not, or the sun coming up from the bottom or coming up from the top. Now it's time to start creating a card and we're gonna be creating a really cute mermaid card and we're gonna use the sunray stencil in a different way. And so here I wanted to show you what we like to do with full stick post-its. So I die cut the frame die of the mermaid from white cardstock and I'm just taking all of the pieces. I added the frame first and now I'm filling in all of my little puzzle pieces onto the full stick post-it. And I'm doing this so that it holds all of my pieces in place so that it's much easier to color the pieces. And I'm not trying to hold a tiny little piece that I'm coloring with my markers. So this is a really great way to just kind of corral all of the pieces so that you can add color. So at the beginning of the video we used colored cardstock to add some beautiful detail to the die cut and in this case we're going to be using some Copic markers. These are really gorgeous watercolored as well, colored pencils, etc. Any kind of coloring medium looks really great. The other thing that looks really nice is if you use colored cardstock but you just add a little ink blending on the side just for a little shadow, that looks really great with these paper piecing style dies as well. So here you can see I'm adding a little bit of shadow with my marker and then I'm blending it out with my medium and then with my light just to give her a lot of nice detail. Now I'm not worried about coloring over the frame because I'm going to use a different frame for the mermaid anyway so I'm not too worried about that. Now for all of these paper piecing style dies, you can of course use a black licorice cardstock frame like we've been doing in the samples we showed you, but they look really great with different colored frames as well, either white cardstock or even a fun color or a gold. So you can have a lot of fun playing around with these and at the end of the video we'll show you some really cool design team cards that have lots of different options. So here we're back with our awesome double sided adhesive sheet we've added to some black licorice cardstock. And then we're also going to take another one of those frame pieces that we've die cut out of black licorice cardstock. I'm going to pop out all of the pieces and then we can peel that liner paper up on that mermaid base. It's going to have all that great adhesive there and then we're going to add the frame on there. And this is effectively kind of creating our puzzle that we're going to drop our pieces that we colored with our markers in. And this is one of my favorite parts is kind of seeing the whole thing come together. I know I keep saying my favorite part but gosh I really love these paper piecing style dies. And you can see colored with the markers isn't that oh she's just so I was putting this together I mean she's just so pretty. I just love it. So now here I'm going to go ahead and drop in all the pieces. There is her tail and then we can drop in the rest of her details and that looks so pretty. Then for her eyes and mouth, we're gonna do the same technique where you can see when we ran it through the die cut machine, the black licorice cardstock is a bit thicker. So the pieces just kind of stay in there, keep them like that, lay the face piece right over the other one and use your pokey tool. And as you poke out the eye and the mouth, they're just gonna to attach to that adhesive that's already there and it's gonna perfectly fill in your mermaid. And she's just looking so cute. Next up, we're gonna create an inky ocean for this mermaid to hang out in. So I'm gonna use a stitched rectangle die. This is the largest stitched rectangle and we're gonna be inking it up with some Distress Oxide inks. And so I'm gonna be starting with this really pretty ocean palette and we're gonna start with tumble glass at the top. So I want it to be light at the top and then darker towards the bottom. Kind of like the light is gonna be at the top coming from the sun into the ocean and as it gets to the bottom, you can't see the sun as much anymore so it's darker. So I'm gonna ink on that tumble glass ink and then now we're gonna work through our different colors. So the next one we're gonna use is Peacock Feathers and I'm going to overlap the colors so that there's a nice blend between the two of them. To help create that blend, I'm gonna go back into my lighter colored ink, the Tumble Glass, and go back and forth between the two colors to create that look. Next, I took out the Mermaid Lagoon color because, I mean, it says mermaid in it, so it has to be the perfect color, right? We're gonna ink that towards the bottom, and then once again, where the Peacock Feathers and the Mermaid Lagoon meet, we're gonna go back and forth between those colors to help blend it out. Now at this point, I thought I needed a little bit of a darker colored ink, so I ended up taking some chip sapphire ink and inking the bottom there just to add a little extra dimension, and I feel like it kind of makes the whole thing. 
Now I'm going to spray this with a spray bottle and then pick up the excess water with a paper towel and you'll see that you get these beautiful little droplets that's adding to the really cool ocean texture. Now I normally have a bigger spray bottle that does bigger sprays, but I couldn't find it. I can only find this tiny one. So to get those bigger looks, I added some water to a block and I'm just flicking off the block with my paintbrush to create bigger splatters, which I think is a really, really cool look. And I'm also tapping the paintbrush too, just to get different sizes of splatters because that little spray bottle just does little sprays. And isn't that fun? I feel like it gives it so much texture. Now comes the magic, and that's using the sunray stencil to be the sun rays coming down through the water. Do you know what I'm talking about? That really pretty look. So I'm going to line it up right with the top of the cardstock, and the sun rays are going to be coming down from the top. And we're going to take out some Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink. And this is going to sit on top of that Distress Oxide ink and give it a really cool look. Now I'm moving pretty slow here because this is a really thick ink, and I want the ink ink to be thicker towards the top and then lighter towards the bottom. So as I re-ink it onto my ink pad, I start at the bottom and as I move my way down, I'm kind of like smearing the ink down across those sun rays. And because it's a thick pigment ink, I can almost just smear it down with the brush. And you'll see as I lift this stencil, how the rays get lighter towards the bottom because I was smearing that ink down. And isn't that so pretty? Oh, I just love how it looks so much. Next up, this scene needs some accessories. So we're gonna take the Shadow Box Ocean add-on and take some pieces from that. We're gonna use the little bubbles from that. And then we're also gonna use the shell that is a part of this mermaid die. We're gonna give her a little crown in a little bit too. And here you can see that I'm using that full stick post again just to hold these pieces in place, which is really helpful. And I'm gonna add some color to these little bubbles as well. I'm just using a really light blue green marker and just adding a little bit of a shadow. And you can see it just kind of helps bring it to life so that it's not just plain white. Now here, once again, I have my double-sided adhesive sheet on my black cardstock. We're going to die cut those shell bases, and then we can peel up that liner paper. It's going to be like a cool little sticker, and then we can add the frame over top. We'll do that with the second shell as well, and then we can drop in the pieces that we colored with the markers, and oh my gosh, these little shells end up looking just so pretty find some more scene elements, I went into my die cuts and I found once again in that ocean add-on for the shadow box, we found some cool little seaweed pieces and some coral pieces. And then we're also going to take a look at Lift the Flat Meadow, which has some rocks that are going to help set the scene as well. So this is a fun shop your stash and kind of see what different pieces you have. I also made a simpler version of this card that I'll show you in just a little bit that shows the same idea without extra accessories. So it's fun to be able to do things in both ways. Now the plain color cardstock didn't quite match our mermaid, so all I'm doing is just taking one single marker that's in the same shade as the cardstock and just adding a little bit of shadow just so that it helps bring the cardstock into the look of our pieces that were completely colored with markers. And you can see by just adding a little line with a marker that's in the same color, it just brings those little cardstock pieces to life. I realized at this point that I had never created a crown for the mermaid, and I just love this little tiara. So once again, we have our piece with the double-sided adhesive. We're going to add our frame to it, and at the beginning, we use the gold foil metallic cardstock to add our little pearls in. In this case, I'm going to use pearlescent vellum to give the look of a pearl crown, which I think is really pretty, right? Because you would think pearls are in the ocean, so I think it's such a pretty look. And I just love this pearlescent vellum. It's just magic, and when you put it against that uh, double-sided adhesive sheet, you can't see the adhesive behind it either and it just looks so pretty and it has this like really really gorgeous shimmer. So for the bottom, I wanted to create a little sandy bottom for this. So we're using that same stitched rectangle that we cut that ocean background that we did earlier. We're gonna die cut that with a simple stitched hillside border. And we're gonna do this really awesome sand colored ink combo that Jacqueline here at L'Enfant headquarters came up with. And it's pizza crust mixed with the sugar cookie. And there's something about the two of these that look absolutely amazing as sand together. I'm starting with the lighter color and just inking over all of that white cardstock. And then we're bringing in the darker color, the pizza crust, just just over top and I'm not being perfect with it because the imperfections to me is what makes it look even more like sand. Now we can start to put all of these elements together. So we're going to add the sand to the bottom of our ocean and then we can start adding all of those die cut elements that we colored in with markers just on the edges of colored cardstock. We'll add our seaweed. I'm tucking some behind the sand and in front of it just to give some nice dimension and we'll add the coral as well. I'm going to add the mermaid on with some foam squares so that she really has a pop and she's kind of the star of the show. And of course she has a little shell to hold 
we'll add another shell towards the bottom and then give her her crown. Now, these bubbles that we used from the awesome ocean add-on to the shadow box, those bubbles are not the paper piecing style die, so I kind of had to improvise just a little bit. And so I added the little frame of the bubble down onto the cardstock, and then I dropped the pieces directly onto the cardstock. And that ended up working pretty well, and I like that they kind of match the look of the mermaid too, but I think we might have to add some bubbles in one of our next paper piecing style designs. So now I'm just adding liquid glue into the centers of these, although you'll notice I actually never added Add the liquid glue I forget to add it they all fall out and then I added it later off camera <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to drop in all of those little pieces there and then of course I'm going to go to this beautiful mermaid stamp set for the best sentiments it's got the greatest sentiments to go along with this die cut mermaid and so I'm going to stamp the waving hello and then line up a sentiment banner die with it and we'll run it through the die cut machine We'll add it to the top of the card, climbing off the edge of the card. I think that's always a really fun look with these banners. And then I can just use my scissors to trim off any of the excess. I always like to flip the card over and kind of cut it from this direction. I always find it's easier to kind of have the scissors right up against the edge of that cardstock piece. Now here we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We're gonna add some tape runner to that and then layer on this whole scene. And this card is done. And oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I absolutely loved creating this card. The sun rays look gorgeous. That white Yeti ink over top of the inked background is just so beautiful and it's so much fun. And here's another look at the card. And then here's a look at a card that I made that's really similar, but just a bit of a simpler version. I added the sentiment on a little banner at the bottom and it looks really great too. So you can do more of a scene like the first card or do something more like just the little mermaid hanging out in the ocean and both look so great. Next up, Shari is going to blow you away with an awesome platform pop-up that uses the mermaid and the sun ray stencil in two different ways. So take it away, Shari. So today I'm creating a little platform pop-up scene for my Mermazing Mermaid to sit on. I'm going to be using the platform pop-up base, which I've cut from some aqua spiffy speckles. And then I'm also going to be using the platform pop-up add-on. So I've cut this piece from some yellow spiffy speckles. I'm also going to use the new Sunray background stencil to create some sun rays in my sky, in my sunny sky here, and then also in the ocean. I will be using that palm tree border, so that is why I kind of had that out to see how that's going to look with these sun rays. Make sure I don't need to move it up any further. And then I'm going to be using some Distress Oxide ink. So I'm starting out with Wild Honey. And I'm just pulling that ink up from the bottom where the sun rays are little out to the edges. And then once I have a good coat of the wild honey, I'm taking a little bit of carved pumpkin and just making a little bit darker right in the center. So that's going to peek up behind those palm trees. So I'm just making sure I pull it up far enough to where I'm going to see that. And then here is my pretty sunny sky. Now I've cleaned off my stencil and I'm going to make some sun rays down in my water. Basically that kind of look when the sun filters through the water. So I've flipped my stencil in the other direction to get the look that I want. And I'm going to be using some salvaged patina distress oxide to make my sun rays in the water. I guess actually I'm making the part that is not the sun ray. I'm going to let the lighter color of my paper be the rays and this be the darkness of the water in between. I'm going to tape off that just to keep the bottom of my box clean. And I'm just kind of taking a look at what it looks like. I should have taped it off first, but it's really easy to realign my stencil and then go back to my inking. So I'm just making sure I pull that salvage patina all the way to the edges. And then I'm going to go in with a darker color. So I have some peacock feathers, which is a little bit darker. And I'm just going to pull that darker color up from the bottom and the edges so that my water is darker the further down into the ocean we go. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off that stencil and you can see how where the lighter colors left you get that look of the rays filtering down through the water. But of course this is a little bit too perfect. As we get down in the water those rays are going to kind of 
dissipate a little bit and not be so bright. So I'm going back in with the peacock feathers and the salvage patina and just adding a little bit of darkness to the edges. And that kind of gives it more of the look like it's filtering down through the water. I also cut the add-on for the platform pop-up from some craft card stock. And then that is what I'm going to cut my palm tree border from. So this way I know that the length and the width and the score lines are all in the right place that this can layer onto my background that I already created. Before I glue it down though, I'm going to take the time to add a little bit of color to the trunks of the trees so that they're not exactly the same color as the sand. And I'm just using a Copic marker to do that. I've cut the tops of the trees from the green spiffy speckles paper so that it kind of sticks with that more pastel color that I've got going on. And then I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue to layer those on. I'm starting with my largest pieces of my trees. And that way I can layer the smaller ones over top when I add those, when I have the pairs of trees that touch each other. Now there are two different tops. There are tops with four branches and tops with five. So I just, I had the wrong top there at first, but now I've got them matching up perfectly. And luckily with the liquid glue, you can kind of adjust it if it's not exactly in the right place when you touch it down to the paper. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So now those are all ready to go. I'm going to fold my sun, sunny sky backdrop I made and glue my palm trees down. So I did fold them before. I'm just reinforcing that fold a little bit, especially when it goes across that one tree where I glued the green piece of paper to it. And then again, I'll just use some liquid glue to add these, putting the glue all over the sand on the bottom and the tops. This way this is very well stuck down on this background and none of the pieces pop up. But it's really easy to use those kind of folds as a guide to get it in the right place. So now that my background part right there is done, I can start to work on assembling the platform pop-up box, the bottom part. And I'm just adding some double-sided tape to the little tabs on each of the pieces. And then I can take the piece where the score lines are and fold it and just fold all those folds on both of those pieces. I do think it's easier to do some stenciling like I did here before you fold it. So that's why I'm waiting till now to fold along those score lines. And I'll do the same thing to the second piece. I've also cut two of those T pieces from some craft cardstock, and I'm just adding some thin double-sided tape. And then I cut the little stitched hillside that comes in the die set out of that same craft card stock. And I'll just layer one of those on each of these tees. Now I'm not putting a tee in the back slot of this because the mermaid is so large that I don't really need that third layer. Now I'm going in with that same Copic marker that I used on the tree trunks and just adding some dots to give that sand the look of some texture. And I'll do the same to the sand on my background piece. Now I can start to assemble some things. I've put some double-sided tape on the bottom of this tee. I've just folded it on the score line. I'm gonna tuck it into that slot, tuck the tab underneath, make sure it's nice and snug against the platform, and then glue everything together by folding it together. Now this one is going to go in the center, so I just need to cut it off where that score line is. And then I can adhere this down to that center flat rectangle. And as I said before, I'm not going to put a third layer to this, so I don't need to worry about that little T piece on this other half of the box. I can just close up my box and then I can put my two sides together. So I'll just pull off the liner paper on that little tab 
Now I've got both of these together and then I'm adding some double sided tape all across that rectangle in the middle. And once I've done that, I can expose all that adhesive and fold this box over to finish the platform. I'm adding some of that eighth inch thin adhesive tape to the very, very bottom of my background piece. And then this is going to fit just inside that scalloped edge of the platform box. So you just set it right against the platform and it tucks right in there. And now I have my background piece. Now to work on my mermaid. So I have a piece of cardstock here. This is just a scrap I didn't use, so it does not to be a, need to be a stitch rectangle. That just happened to be what I have. This is just white, and I'm adding some double-sided adhesive sheet to the white so that I can cut out the solid mermaid shape and have adhesive all over it. So now this is a fully adhe adhesive sheet. I can just pull it off. And that makes it really easy to layer on these delicate pieces like the outline. Now I cut the outline for the mermaid from some narwhal cardstock. And then I've cut her hair from some purple from the textured canvas purple cardstock pack. The top of her bathing suit is from some guava. And then I cut her tummy and her arms and her face from some craft card stock because this mermaid's sitting on the beach and she is getting a tan. Now I did use the sunglasses die. This is from the Flamingo Floaty die set. And I'm going to add those to her. So I'm not filling in her eyes, but I did fill in her mouth using the same guava card stock because I thought it might look fun if she had some pink lipstick on. Now for her tail, I have a scrap silver glitter piece of cardstock and I'm just adding some patina alcohol ink to it. I'm just going to cover this and it's pretty bright right now but as it soaks in it's going to kind of dull a little bit. It's going to keep it silver and you're just going to get kind of an aqua tone to that silver. I'm going to use this for her tail. I thought it looked really cool as some scales. So now my mermaid is all finished, but I thought she might need a friend. So I grabbed the little crab from the palm trees die set. He is cut from some raspberry cardstock and I'm just adding some white gel pen details. Now I can put my friends on the little sandbars here in the ocean. So I'm adding some glue to the bottom of my mermaid so she can set on this one in the middle and you can see why I don't really need anything behind her. She really fills up the space. And then for the crab, I wanted his eyes and his mouth to be black but I didn't want to layer another piece behind him. So I just kind of held him on there where he's going to be, marked where his eyes and his mouth are and just colored that piece of cardstock with a black marker. So when I layer him on top, you're not going to see where I colored that but you are going to see that he has black eyes and a black mouth. Now there's also this little seashell with the Mermazing Mermaid and I'm putting together about four of these with some narwhal cardstock for the outline and some ballet slipper cardstock for the inside. I'm going to add this one to the sandbar in the front with the crab and then I'm going to stamp a sentiment on the front of the box. You could use the little panel that comes with the platform pop-up, but I didn't want to cover up my really cool stenciling, so I decided to stamp it directly onto the box. And because it's already assembled, I am using my Misty, so nothing moves, and I can put some pressure and make sure I get a nice impression. And then I'm going to take those other shells that I assembled and just decorate a little bit more on the outside of the box. And then here is my finished platform pop-up with the Mermazing Mermaid. I really love the look that that sunray backdrop gave. I really like it going one direction in the sky and the other direction in the ocean. I just think that's really fun. And I also love her sunglasses from the Flamingo Floaty set. I just think that is so much fun. And I love how this turned out.
This card is just too cute, Shari. I love her sparkly tail and her purple hair and her sunglasses and the whole platform pop up with the sun rays going up and down. It looks so cool. I just love it. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. It's starting off with a card by Callie that's just beautiful. I love how she used the sun ray stencil and the way she colored the mermaid hair is just gorgeous. Here we have a beautiful layout by Melissa that shows that these little mermaids are perfect on cards and on layouts in your albums too. This is the card by Elena that inspired me to make mine today. I just love it so much. And then this card by Maureen is so pretty and I love that she used white cardstock to be the outline for her mermaid. It's a really cool and different look. I love the bold sun rays on Mindy's card and her fun custom die cut sentiment that says see you soon. This card by Care is so pretty and I love that she used the stitched ripple backdrop to create a really cool ocean for her sparkly mermaid to hang out in. This is a more simple version of the card I made at the beginning of the video and I just love using that white ink in the sunray background stencil. And then this platform pop up by Grace is just gorgeous. It's so sparkly and so pretty and I love all the gorgeous marker detail that she added to all of the die cuts. I could look at this card forever. And then here we have an awesome sunray stencil card by Tammy and she brought in our smooth sailing stamp set with the sunray stencil and it's a perfect match. We have some more awesome sunray stencil inspiration and the sunray stencil is also a perfect match for our flamingo floaty die. So I just love seeing it in the background. It's so bold and so much fun. I love that there's so many ways to use the stencil. We've got it both landscape and portrait and it's gonna look gorgeous with so many different die cuts and stamp sets just like Tammy used it with that previous smooth sailing card. And this card by Anea is just so pretty here and oh my goodness, look how gorgeous this one is by Audrey. So you definitely need to check out the flamingo floaty for more sunray inspiration so we cannot wait to see what you guys create with these new products so make sure to share it with us thank you so much for watching today and i hope you have an absolutely amazing day bye